breakfast. Yeah. What do you have for breakfast, Stephen? Today? Yeah. Uh, nothing yet today. I, I was going, so I was actually, I ordered food, right? To this, w- this wonderful studio here in London um, at 10.30 a.m. And it said it would take half an hour to get here. And it got here when you arrived. Mm. Now I looked at it and I thought, if I eat this, then I'm going to have some kind of like dump halfway through this conversation. Mm. So it's just sat. Can I ask what there. you ordered? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because some foods, some breakfast foods will have that impact and make you feel tired. <laughs> um, so I ordered a breakfast wrap. So it's got like eggs, avocados, bacon in it. And it's like a gluten-free wrap thing. And I was looking at it thinking because of this bread, I think the bread is probably going to make me have a dump. Mm. And I don't ever want to have like a energy dump halfway yeah. through a conversation. I don't want to fall asleep. You know, that's rude. That would be, yeah. Midway through the conversation. <laughs> so I've not eaten yet. Interesting. I so had ac- coffee. So actually, you know, your choice is, is a pretty good one in terms of glucose. So the main thing we want to do to steady our glucose levels is have a savory breakfast instead of a sweet one. So we want to have a breakfast that contains protein, you know, like eggs, fish, meat, protein powder, maybe some fat like the avocado, that's fantastic. And maybe some fiber if you want to add some veggies in there. And then any sort of like bread or starches or potatoes should be there just for taste. It should Mm. not be the centerpiece of the breakfast. And then importantly, for a savory breakfast that keeps your glucose level steady, we shouldn't eat anything sweet at all for breakfast, except whole fruit if we want some. What's the difference between whole fruit and whatever isn't whole f- fruit? <laughs> Ooh, well, you know, as I explained, like fruit has been bred by yeah, humans yeah, yeah. for a super long time to be extra sweet, extra juicy. So today, when you look at an apple, for example, it's really been pumped full of sweetness and sugar and made really easy to eat. I had this conversation this week with my partner. Um, she was offering me some fruit. And because now I'm like a food, you know, arrogant little food guy because <laughs> of all these conversations I've had, I was like, babe, it's got sugar in it and they've bred it. And and then she was like, really? And we had a conversation about it and I Googled it. And I said, um, I Googled like the historic banana yes. and apple yes. and the pear. And I showed her and she was like, what? Mm-hmm. Because they they obviously, you know, the fruit we have today is so bright and big. Absolutely. So like and appetizing. easy to eat. Yeah, 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 exactly. You peel it, but you know. And then I showed her some of these pictures of these old bananas and they're like tiny and they're like full of seeds and stuff full of seeds yeah. and tiny and actually quite tart you, you know wouldn't eat, yeah you would you wouldn't really eat that many no, of you them. wouldn't want to yeah and so even though fruit has been bred for a super long time to be extra sweet if you want to eat something sweet it's still the best thing to eat because of the fiber that fruit contains and as they explained you know fiber is protective in so, whole in whole fruit in whole fruit so now here's the thing while a piece of whole fruit is the best thing to eat if you want to eat something sweet, the problem starts when we denature that piece of whole fruit. When we blend it, when we juice it, when we dry it, when we puree it, so many different things. So let's take, for example, when you juice a, a piece of fruit. Juicing is essentially taking away all the fiber, get it, getting rid of all the fiber. The fiber is like the, the hard stuff, you know, the, the pulp and the, everything that's left over. So if you juice like an apple, You're just taking all the sugar from the apple, putting it in water and getting rid of all the protective fiber. So all of that super concentrated sugar that's been bred into that piece of fruit, you're not giving to your body in a really, really fast way. And as I explained, the speed of delivery is really important. The faster all that sugar arrives, the more your mitochondria get hurt, the more the spikes are happening, inflammation, et cetera. And so when you drink apple juice, you're essentially drinking like the amount of sugar in two already pretty bread apples and drinking it in a few seconds. And so your body is experiencing a massive spike and your body doesn't care whether the sugar came from a piece of fruit or if it came from like cane sugar and is in a can of Coca-Cola. The molecules in the apple juice and in the can of Coke are the same. Your body does not make a difference. Your body's not like, oh, this sugar came from fruit. Now it's going to cause any issues. Oh, this sugar is from Coca-Cola. Oh, it's going to cause problems. Your body does not care. And in a can of fruit juice, there's almost as much sugar as in a can of Coca-Cola. So when we eat fruit juice, we have to do it in a way that's like, okay, this is dessert, right? This is for my pleasure. This is not for my health. This is going to give me pleasure and maybe make me feel a bit happy, but it's not going to help my body. 
Wait, which one of these bastards told me that fruit juice was good for me? I've been drinking this stuff like I was- <laughs> Me so, too. You know, growing up, if I went and had fruit juice, I was like, well done, Steve. Yeah. You know, you've done yourself, you've done future Steve a, a massive service there. And then I got to fucking 30 years old and people start telling me that fruit juice is um, bad for me. I'm like, who who lied to me? Do you want to know who lied? Who? The people who make fruit juice. Yeah, I thought it would be that. Yeah. And same for me, you know, I grew up eating, drinking orange juice and a Nutella crepe every morning for well, breakfast. Well, no, come on. You knew the Nutella crepe wasn't good for you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, I was like, oh, I'm having orange juice, so it balances it out. You know, I had no idea yeah, yeah, yeah. that I was just eating starches and sugars, just eating a massive glucose spike for breakfast. And when you create a big glucose spike at breakfast, your entire day then becomes completely like a glucose roller coaster. The breakfast spike really di dictates how you're going to be doing for the rest of the day. So what is a whole fruit? Give a whole example. fruit is like a piece of fruit that is just Oh, you like mean just whole. like not processed. Okay. Yeah, like a, <clears throat> like something you can hold in your hand that okay. you buy at the supermarket, like an untouched yeah. from the tree. Okay. I thought it's, it's not a certain type of fruit. It's just you're talking about the state of the fruit. Like, yeah. Okay. What would be a better word for whole? No, I guess that is the word. I'm just an idiot. Like um, <laughs> uh, uh, a piece of, I don't know. Whole is probably the right word. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to have any... So granola. I used yeah. to think granola was... I was like, a, again, doing my health service by yeah. eating granola. So listen, if you're having a great time, no symptoms, feeling amazing, top energy, no cravings, no hormonal issues, no skin Save issues, it. whatever. I want to be Superman. <laughs> yeah, like if you're doing fine and you're eating things that are sweet and you're having a great time, I have nothing to teach you. But if you're suffering in one way or another... Many of the symptoms we talked about earlier, look at your breakfast and avoid the sweet stuff. So avoid the granolas and the breakfast cereals and the oats with banana and honey in them. Switch to something savory. And I have lots of examples of what's a savory breakfast in my books, but that is really going to help set your day on a much better path and going to help your physical and mental health thrive. So if you were to try and summarize the message you're trying to spread into maybe like a sentence or two mm. that someone can embrace as a philosophy for their dietary choices and their eating habits. What, what exactly would that be? I think it would be learn the glucose hacks and then just eat everything you love. These hacks, I hope they become, and this is kind of my mission, I hope they become as well known as drink water, brush your teeth. That's kind of the vibe I'm going for. These are fundamental scientific principles that can really help you break free and fast track you to feeling so, so much better. And they will help you cut through all the noise in the marketing, et cetera, because it's really about how your body functions on like a biochemical level. So sorry, that was more than one sentence, but no, that's you great. get it. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.